Welcome back to the Twisted Tale for our cocktail sessions. Uh, we are releasing these every Friday at 5 p.m., so keep an eye out. We've put up a few really great cocktails so far. We're going to continue with one of our classics here at the Twisted Tale. This particular cocktail has been on our menu since day one of being open, so it's been enjoyed here for nine years by you guys, everybody who comes in, who keeps on coming back and asking for it, which is why it's never come off the menu. And luckily for everyone at home, Pretty simple to make as well. So today we're going to open up the books, spill the secrets, and give you the recipe for our top selling cocktail time after time. As the name suggests, this does include a fresh herb named thyme. Thyme, obviously, you can pick up at any grocery store, so you should be readily available to have that in your household. Uh, for this, we're going to use about five sprigs. So just get some nice, healthy green sprigs of thyme. Make sure when you're going shopping for it that if you see any brown or slightly graying pieces, that's old, it's been around. Look for the nice vibrant stuff. Um, so we're gonna drop in five sprigs here into our tin. We are gonna be muddling this time. So whatever vessel you're using here, just make sure that it is durable enough for you to put some pressure on it um, so that it doesn't break. So be careful of any thin glassware or anything like that. Best thing is a little metal tin. Um, or if you have a cocktail shaker, that's exactly what we're using. So a cocktail shaker will be perfect. Anytime you're muddling something, you want uh, to muddle into liquid. The purpose of muddling is to press down on the leaves and extract those nice flavorful oils and scents and aromas. But if you're just doing it with a muddling stick, as soon as you take that stick out, you're losing all of the aromas on the end of your muddling stick. So we want to be adding some liquid in here so that when we're muddling, those flavors are infusing straight into the liquid and not being left on the stick. So we're going with our first, second ingredient, actually. This is a ginger liqueur. Uh, the profile of this drink is going to be citrus forward, herbaceous, and spicy from some ginger. So for this particular liqueur, we have Barrow's Intense Ginger Liqueur. Also readily available on the state store's shelves is a product called Canton, C-A-N-T-O-N. Um, if you like the intensity of the spiciness of ginger, um, then I recommend the, the intense for this profile for this cocktail. So we're going to be pouring a half an ounce, so there's a small amount, of intense into our tin on top of the thyme. Again, quick explanation of our measuring tool here. This is called the jigger. The big end, as you can see, is a two ounce pour. The small end is a one ounce pour, and right inside there is a little line that shows me exactly where to go for halfway. Is right there. We use these every single time. It's important that you get your measurements correctly. You can be making a great drink and then you want to go back and make it again, but you may pour a half ounce of something extra in it by mistake because you didn't measure and now your drink is off kilter. And you're like, oh, that was really good the first time. It wasn't so good the second time. So consistency is key. So I always measure, even if you're at home, recommend measuring your drinks. If you don't have a jigger, then you can use a little shot glass. It's normally a one ounce pour, so you can use a half of that for this, and a one ounce to fill up for something else and keep your proportions in check. All right, so we have our thyme and our intense ginger liqueur. So it's time now to muddle into the tin. You wanna push down. Thyme has got a really small, resilient leaf, so give it some welly. Put some pressure on it, and as you push down, give it a little twist as well. It just helps extract all of the oils and flavors that you want coming right out of that leaf. So by the time you're done, you should have it mushed down in the bottom. You see the little liquid spilling around over top of the herb, and that is exactly what we want. And now it is time to add the rest of our ingredients. So this cocktail, even though it is a Twisted Tail cocktail, we are a whiskey and bourbon bar. This does not include whiskey. I know, it's gonna blow your mind. This is actually a gin cocktail. Since we're in Philadelphia, we are using our favorite gin here, which is Blue Coat, locally distilled from Philadelphia Distilling Company. And we are going to put in an ounce and a half of Blue Coat. Blue Coat, really nice, fragrant, but very dry gin. So, ounce and a half. Straight in it goes. On top of the intense ginger liqueur. Don't forget it's already in there. Now we're gonna add that with a little lemon juice. 
So we have a three quarter ounce lemon juice. So again, flipping back to the one ounce side and going up to my three quarter measurement, which is almost at the top of the jigger. A little problem with this lemon juice here. That one's got stuck. Okay, three quarter ounces, and it goes. And then we want to give it a final zinc. So we've used some ginger liqueur already, and now we're going to use some ginger puree as well. This is going to do two things to it. One, add to the intensity of that spice, for sure. But two, also add a texture. Ginger puree is thicky and thick, as you can see. Um, this you can make at home relatively easily. Just ginger root. If you have a mechanical juicer, uh, pop it, the ginger root in there and use the puree set, setting as opposed to the juice setting. And just mix with uh, a little bit of lemon, sugar, um, and some pectin as well, which you could get in the stores. If you are not making this at home, then there are a couple of different brands that uh, you can look for. The most popular and best one that I recommend is called Perfect Puree. And if you are making at home, I suggest you even buy Perfect Puree first, so then you can balance the flavor profiles when you make it, see if you can get something that matches. We're going to get, use a, a big heaping bar spoon of ginger puree. Um, if you don't have a bar spoon or a mixing spoon, then a teaspoon will do. Um, so you need a nice generous amount, but not overkill. And that's going in there. Okay, it is time now to get our shake on. So let's add some ice. The ice is obviously going to be chilling down our drink. It's also going to be melting and diluting the drink. So we're adding a water content to this as we shake. So the shake is really important now. We have all of our liquids in here. We have our, our time in here. Now we've added the ice for chill factor and dilution. So Get it on. I'm always thinking of a Mikey Jr. too when I'm shaking to that. So the shake is important as well. It's going to mix everything together, obviously. As I said, you have the dilution factor there as well. But also, it's the extra little bit of oomph that that time needs just to infuse everything all together. And then we have uh, our completed cocktail here. We're using a martini glass for this particular cocktail. And in previous videos, you will have seen me double strain through a fine tea strainer to catch all the little bits of ice and any little bits of sediment that might be in your shaker. For this particular drink, we're actually looking for those broken pieces of thyme leaf to be decorating the cocktail on top. And when we sip one of those, it just gives us a really nice, fresh punch of thyme on the palate. So we're actually just gonna pour this straight out of the shaker into the glass and let those leaves float around. It's a nice, beautiful contrast to the color and a real big thing when we're done. And that's all it is, ladies and gentlemen. Now you can make your own time after time. Cheers.